All right, continuing on talking about three approaches to solving a business problem with technology. The, the first one, business process automation, which is the simplest one, uh, indicates that or suggests that you're going to leave most of the steps the same in how somebody gets some work done, but you're going to try to automate some portion of it. So for ex let's say that you are a growing loan processing company, or you, or you supply loans to people that apply for loans, and you need to run a credit check on everybody that applies. Let's say that when you're small, you only get a couple applications a day, and so you just do it manually. But as you've grown, um, maybe you're getting thousands of these a day, and, it, and it's a little bit cumbersome to copy information out of one program and put it into another. And so you write some software that automatically reads through every application in your queue every day and it automatically comes with a comes back from the credit agency with a credit score for you so that you can so that they can see at least for that part of the loan application um, anyway they, they can just do that part of it much faster than they did before when they're doing it manually now it's all automated but it only just it, it just speeds up one task that a loan officer might be working on. All the other things uh, might be the same. Uh, you know, For example, checking work references to make sure that you actually do have the job that you put on the loan application, uh, like when you put it on there. All right, next one, business process improvement. This just suggests that you're going to, it's not going to be as simple as, as speeding up just one little thing. Uh, you could be touching, you could be speeding up maybe several things and and maybe changing how a person does their job. And, and the, the, the difference between improvement and re-engineering is perhaps a fuzzy one. Um, we're just saying that there's a qualitative difference that you are moderately changing how they do their processes with business process improvement and you are dramatically changing how they do their processes with business process re-engineering. So it might be as going back to the loan application process that you find some ways to do a couple things better with business process improvement but with business process re-engineering re you say hey let's let's start from scratch and think about how we would do let's forget about the fact that we have a process in place through which we are accepting loan applications let's pretend like we're a brand new business and we're gonna try to create the best way to process loan applications on planet earth such that we can reduce our costs and be really effective and then so you're not then tied down to existing practices you're not worried about your employees you're not worried about anything you're just thinking what is the best way that I could do this and we we're gonna feature IT in there and that might mean that you completely eliminate all the employees um, it might mean that you uh, do things very very different than you do currently but it's because you you wanted to find the best way to do it and you said hey cost is not an issue here we're gonna get it done right because we're gonna pick up our cost savings later on okay um, there are a number of different approaches, named approaches, that you could use that fit in under uh, business process automation, business process improvement, or business process reengineering. So, for example, uh, if you wanted to do something that would be considered business pro process automation, you could look at problem analysis, which is looking through a given system of, of work and saying what are the problems, and then when that comes back, you identify you might identify something that needs to be sped up and automated. Another one similar to that but different is what is the root cause of the problem. So I mean it, that almost sounds the same but if there's a really serious issue in the company like uh, customers are mad and they're uh, chewing up a lot of time at a shipping company because they aren't you know their packages are getting lost and the fact is packages are getting lost well there's a bunch of things that are problems you're losing money because people are calling in but the root cause of the problem if you go to that would be that you know there's some reason somewhere that's causing the packages to be lost and that might be what you want to narrow in on and that's what the root cause is as opposed to just looking at all the problems that currently exist 
uh, let's see, business process improvement. So some approaches that might be associated with that include activity-based costing. So look at every single thing that you do as part of fulfilling your um, work activity. Maybe one person checks your credit score, another person checks your work um, uh, references, etc. while you apply for a loan. Maybe there's a bunch of different things you could do. You could look at the cost of each one of those activities in terms of paying for it in your current process and then you could say, hey, how could I reduce the cost of that process by uh, fixing or adjusting or removing the most expensive ones in that work process? Uh, a similar thing to that would be duration analysis. You could bring your time down on a process by looking at the time it takes to do each step in the work process and targeting that to get it done better and faster. Uh, jumping So anyway, these are just all examples of something that would f might fit under that category of business process improvement or one of the others. And then with business process reengineering, um, I'm not familiar with personally with outcome analysis or what they mean by technology analysis, but uh, activity analysis, or sorry, activity elimination and breaking the assumptions, that makes a lot of sense to me. You look at the whole system of work and how they get something done, and the first one, uh, how can we eliminate activities from that? I mean, that potentially you could make something a lot uh, more efficient by stopping doing certain things. Like I said before, if you're manually uh, figuring out people's credit scores by going to another website and typing in the information. If you could have a computer do that before a loan processor or even reviews the loans, then uh, that that would be a great thing. Uh, breaking the assumptions, question all activities, do we need them? Yeah, this again is just to this extreme idea of, wait a minute, even though we're a successful business, do we really need to be doing all of these steps? Could we actually throw this all out and do it differently? Now there are ramifications of trying to pursue any one of these strategies. So across the top here we see with business process automation, the simplest version of improving or altering a work system, that the, co the, the cost of it's low, uh, the breadth of analysis is narrow, so you're not looking at too many things within the system, maybe just one specific part that you want to speed up. And if you try to actually work on that problem, speeding up a specific thing, there's not much risk you're going to get it wrong because it's really straightforward what you're trying to do. So you're probably going to be successful in accomplishing what you're setting out to do. At the same time though, the downside is the business value of it is low to moderate. Like yeah, it's going to, imp it's going to improve things for you, but it, it's not necessarily going to change the fortune of your company substantially. So if you eliminate that person's task of looking up credit scores manually and automate it, yeah, it's going to be helpful, but it's not necessarily going to make you a successful loan company as compared to other ones that are in the industry. You'll probably continue just about the same. Uh, if I jump to the other side, though, this is where it's significant. If you just question all your assumptions and are willing to throw completely out your current business process for how you do something and, and look at all the ways that you could do it from scratch with IT, then potentially the cost of that could be very high. You could be automating things that a lot of different people do currently and it might be hard. So you're not just automating one piece, you're automating maybe everything. Uh, in, in extreme cases, and it might be hard to, to replace human knowledge and decision making in, in a system. Uh, the breadth of analysis, very broad, meaning you're taking into account everything, all the pros and the cons, um, all the things, just everything about a system. You have to understand a system inside and out, not just one little small part of it, like getting the credit score. And so if you understand everything, then you can potentially redo that entire system without omitting something that's critical to it being success to, to, to it being uh, well for it to function successfully going forward. Now because you're gonna maybe replace every single aspect of a process, the risk of that is is high. Uh, the risk of failure. Uh, things could go wrong. Uh, much more so than if you were just mo uh, trying to speed up one little tiny piece. But on the bright side, there can be high value to re-engineering things. Um, 
you know, whereas automating one little piece of your system is not going to have a lot of perhaps strategic and competitive advantage for your company. If, if you do things in a way that's remarkably efficient compared to anyone else in the industry, you know, maybe, maybe you go from, let's go with loan, loan op applications and processing, maybe you go from having a bottleneck where you could really only process 100 loans a day to you could theoretically process a million loans a day and you have almost no cost of employees and so uh, the rates that you can offer to customers are lower than anybody else in the industry and you capture the market because everybody wants to go through you so uh, there can be there can be tremendous impacts to re-engineering a process if you do it well enough but again the the difficulty of doing that can be high the cost can be high and the risks can be high uh, if we were in class, perhaps we would go through some activities of, um, you know, in this case, looking at the lost package example that I was alluding to earlier. You might think about which approach you would take to solve this particular problem that's here. Your top three um, would, you know, if you had to solve this problem, do you think it would be more appropriate to, you know, which which of these three of these many approaches listed here in green would be your top three for dealing with that particular type of problem? The uh, intuition there then should be that you might choose different approaches depending on the problem. They might be appropriate in different ways in different circumstances. Okay, um, I'd like to talk about figuring out what the requirements are from a high level. So your requirements, your list of things that show up in the documents like the one I showed you from UCO's portal task force um, or the requirements that become part of the diagrams that I showed you earlier, you have to collect that information somehow and it, and it doesn't happen by magic. Now on our exams and things like that I provide you a nice problem statement that I have collected but in the real world that doesn't happen um, you start off with hey there's a problem or there's an opportunity to do something and then you have to figure out you have to figure out what are the details from a business person's perspective of what that system has to have in order to to work to serve its purpose as a project and so um, qu quite often the most significant part of collecting requirements is interviewing other people. So think of it as you're being called in as the consultant to help a business person that's not IT oriented to solve a problem. And so uh, here's kind of a picture of a computer nerdy head thing looking at a person doing work. The idea here is this the, the computer head there is observing how people do work functions and tries to figure out how they could do it better from an IT perspective. Um, I've included some links to some videos in the slide deck that you could go through and watch which give you some pretty good ideas for how you would interview people. Um, let me just talk about interviewing for a moment. Uh, interviewing is the pro yeah, I mean there's a good example you see somebody sitting down with somebody else and ideally taking notes about how that person does their job. If you were trying to re-engineer or improve or automate a process that, that somebody performed as part of a system, uh, there might be many different roles that, that are part of that. So for example, if there were if, if there was a system where people bought stuff online and it needed to be shipped to them, then perhaps uh, the accountant has some issues that they want dealt with in the online system and the warehouse person has some issues related to um, how they send out their orders and maybe a purchasing person says um, you know I want to have greater insight in the system to things that I need to buy so that we're stocked enough to, to meet the requirements uh, or you know the needs of the customers so there might be three different groups that you as an analyst would interview to say, say you know how is it that you currently do your work so you're looking at them from this perspective how do you currently do your role and then you're thinking about how you're gonna tie those three different people together uh, 
as you develop a system and do your diagrams that you think would work better. So first you'll diagram and write out what they do and then you'll make a list of you know what could be done better. And there, So there's different ways that you could put together your requirements. So one way is just to create a bulleted list. So it might be that as you're talking with a um, a warehouse person, they say, hey look, the system doesn't do these three things currently. If it could do one, items one, two, and three, that's what I need. Well, that's your requirements list. They're looking at a system they recognize as an expert in that area what it doesn't do, and they tell you that, and that becomes part of your requirements list. Um, but also, in addition to that, documentation that's going to help you will will include, you know, doing like little chart diagrams of how all the information gets passed around among everybody and how it gets stored in the system. Um, so that being said, doing interviewing well is important to successfully gathering requirements. So you could say that it's an art. It requires people skills to be able to set up interviews with people to ask the right questions to make them feel comfortable while you're talking to them in a way that they're going to want to give you want to work with you and that they will properly give you all the details that are required um, so on, on in, in one sense it's it's almost intuitive what you would do to gather requirements you would set up interviews with everybody that you're going to talk to you're going to show up on time you're going to be well dressed you're going to be respectful and you're going to have be prepared with questions that you're going to ask them that will help you uh, understand the system better and what you do then is you go because you you put together an incredible amount of documentation oftentimes when you do that you consolidate that and you organize that into requirements lists and also diagrams that capture all the stuff that you learned about in your interviews and then you go back to those people and you verify that and say hey this is the diagram that I wrote down about what you do is this correct is this how you see things and this is the list of things that you would like better is this right um, and then you make small adjustments based on that so that's the high level idea here's here are perhaps some some uh, ex extra information that you might consider just best practices uh, things like create a list of questions to be answered create a list of follow-up questions after you had your initial set of questions um, develop an interview strategy like how are you gonna how are you gonna walk through things are you gonna just let them start talking are you gonna uh, are you gonna go through in detail is it gonna be like really highly structured where you ask all the questions or are you gonna let them explain things there's, anyway there's just different ways you could talk to them about it um, you could you know think about the time that you have budget your time appropriately of course then based on that not a bad idea to practice here's some other things that are nice doing things like smile pay attention to the person again this is kinda it's oftentimes intuitive but maybe to others it wouldn't be um, you know watch the body language of the person you're talking to is, is something going wrong do they you know are they out of time are you bothering them uh, what's what's going on you might want to restate and summarize key points back to them to make sure you're understanding anyway there's just a lot of these things uh, building report with them um, there oftentimes users use terminology that you're not familiar with and so that's an issue okay so that's traditional one-on-one -on -one interviewing and uh, you can look through the videos that I've linked to in the slide deck and um, hopefully that's straightforward to you just do it well follow common sense uh, the more you practice it the more the more you know the, the easier it becomes there's another approach to collecting requirements that doesn't involve interviewing people one by one and that's joint application development and joint application development is about getting people together in in one room possibly for a day or two in, in most cases and trying to collect all the requirements at once and so it's only compare and contrast here when I worked at a an organization that had a sales force and they had a sales support group I spent about one month doing this 
you know these processes observing people interviewing them going back writing down how they did it um, going back to them saying is this did I understand correctly how you do things and, and then well and maybe half of that time was then coming up with new options for how they might do it so maybe it was a couple weeks of understanding what they did and then a couple weeks of going over proposals for how they might do it in the future um, so I met with people one-on-one -on -one in different functional roles but joint application development assumes that you get all a whole bunch of people together at once and that's an interesting approach to it um, and it has pros and cons if you get a whole bunch of people together in one room they they all they all have you know different functional roles that they work in if it's in you know some manufacturing company uh, you know maybe some people are on the sales side of things and some people are in shipping and some people you know so uh, everybody's got different things they're concerned about they don't understand the people's jobs and they do a lot of learning as they get together in one room and talk about how all of their data needs and processes affect one another and you so you're maybe surprised as an analyst that they don't understand all these things but they may have never really talked to one another in, in their lives about how their jobs overlap with other people's so you get everybody together at once and you go through a structured process of trying to identify um, and, and put together again a, a system then that would meet everybody's needs but you can very quickly go through cycles of gathering and information and getting feedback in that environment and one thing you can potentially do is collect requirements in like one session and then you have a software development team on site that maybe puts together some models over lunch or maybe some graphic designers that, that put together some interfaces for for what a potential system could do so that when everybody comes back from lunch then you say okay everybody you know if we had these screens in a new system would that meet your needs and so the the um, the thing that would be pulled out of a session they, they can be similar to what you would get from the one-on-ones it could be pro dot process dot flow diagrams or data flow diagrams it could be uh, or another term activity flow diagrams uh, or activity diagrams to show how people do their work but not necessarily the data they pass um, you you can also create a list of requirements from this so you very quickly in one room at one time get from one functional group in the organization all of the list of items that they want you go to the next functional group and get all the list of things that they want and hopefully there's a good energy and, and that works well and, and you get everything you need now uh, one area where I've seen this work really well is where your organization has a particular need so I have some friends at work in the enterprise search space meaning that you're an organization that maybe has terabytes of data that's in emails and databases and video files and all kinds of different things so maybe your Pepsi corporation or your NASA or the Library of Congress you have ridiculous amounts of data well there are consulting firms that specialize in the taking the types of data that any of those organizations has and creating a solution out of that which allows people to search for that information through an interface um, and aggregate it all into one place and so because the consulting group is really really familiar with what the solutions are like and they're really really familiar what with what organizations typically have on the back end in terms of technology it works really well for them to go through a one or two day joint application development session with all the users to collect that information because um, they're really just repackaging a solution that they've put together before that they've done before and th there may be other cases where that's just not feasible where it's going to have to take place over a long period of time um, you know, if you're you know maybe if you're not doing maybe if it's a completely absolutely new idea it, it may be hard to get all the details figured out in one session on the other hand it could be a really great way to do your initial set of brainstorming so there are uh, different ways in which joint application development can be helpful uh, we if we were in class I would have you do some exercises read through some sample scenarios and then practice asking questions to somebody else um, if you'd like you might just go through this as a thought exercise where you read through one of these scenarios and what you're 
what you're doing is preparing yourself for an interview. You're acting as a representative of a corporation, and the corporation needs you to find out more about what a business or what an end user would need from IT in that situation. And so you would read the problem in this situation. You would think about what you're going to ask the user, and you might just stop there for this exercise. Uh, um, yeah, that's probably all you can do if you're not working with somebody else in the class. But that is a good good way to do things. If you if you want to get real crazy about it, you could you know grab a roommate or something and uh, and practice. So, all right, good luck.